waited for him. Trick or treat, motherfucker. These videos are satiric reviews. You don't have to agree, but don't bitch about it. There's a brand new Halloween movie coming out. And while everyone's talking about how potentially great it's going to be, I can't help but think that this could be the worst of the whole bunch. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not going to be as bad as Halloween Resurrection or uh, more out of place than Halloween 3 Season of the Witch or even as weird as H2. But just by what we know of this movie, it, it, it's going to be odd. I want to remind everyone watching that the movie is not out, but information about the movie is. And it is... interesting. So this movie is going to take the Superman Returns route of rewriting its past, which Halloween has already done once before. Halloween 1, 2, and 4 through 6 all take place within the same continuity. Whereas the movie H2O Halloween 20 years later rewrites the canon after Halloween 2. H2O's biggest selling point was that it was bringing back Jamie Lee Curtis to play Laurie Strode, Michael Myers' sister. Which is ironically the big selling point of this new Halloween sequel. Creatively named Halloween. So it's a sequel that shares the same name as its predecessor. Really? Oh, I'm sure that won't lead to any confusion, you know, seeing as we already have two Halloweens and two Halloween 2s. The new continuity only includes the first Halloween movie, taking away the plot twist of Michael and Laurie being brother and sister. As a matter of fact, the trailer itself pretty much makes it crystal clear. Yeah, I mean, your grandmother is Laurie Strode. Wasn't it her brother who murdered all those babysitters? No, it was not her brother. That's something that people made up. Yo, Mike, come see me! Michael, come and see me! <laughs> This essentially takes years and years of story building and continuity and slashes away at it. No longer was Michael dead set on killing his last remaining kin. He was just some dude in a mask who was, was angry, I guess. The last near 40 years don't count anymore. And if anything, I, I kind of think that that takes away from the lore of the Michael Myers character. I'm playing Michael Myers! This to me just makes Michael another slasher and kind of takes any significance away from the movie itself. No one's saying not to go the soft reboot route, but having known this character and these characters for 40 years, and having their relationships ingrained in pop culture is gonna play against this movie. It's basically saying, fuck what you know, it was wrong, this is what really happened. And maybe I'm in a minority here, but I've always felt like Halloween 1 and 2 were two parts of the same movie. Like uh, Pirates of the Caribbean 2 and 3. Seriously, that one pisses me off. They should have just cut some things and made it one movie. Wasn't worth the ticket. But back on topic. If they're not family, what's his obsession with her? Why does he still want her dead after all these years? Outside of the family relation, what's also bothering me is that Jamie Lee Curtis is old. Now hear me out, that doesn't bother me by itself. But if we're using Halloween 1 as our headcanon, Michael's mask comes off and he's shown to be a man obviously older than Lori. If Lori's in her 60s here, how old can Michael reasonably be? Are we supposed to believe that it's a 70 year old in the Captain Kirk mask and mechanic suit? Because that's stupid. I mean what threat could a 70 year old man impose? Especially a 70 year old man who can't properly see where he's going. Also, wouldn't this mean that he'd be a lot more fragile than he was in the original? Aren't his bones a little bit more brittle? How's he gonna chase after Jamie Lee Curtis and a new group of teenagers without dislocating his hip? Or how about his speed? How's he gonna teleport from one place to the next if he could only walk at a snail's pace? Now think about it, you've never seen Michael run in any of the Halloween movies. Imagine how slow he'd be at 70. Wouldn't he be easy to escape from? They brought back Nick Castle, who betrayed Michael in the original Halloween movies. And Nick Castle is 70 years old. You thought I was exaggerating before, didn't you? Well, so did I until I looked that up. 70 years old on the dot. This is a movie about 70-year-old Michael Myers. 
Unless this movie is going for the copycat reveal, in which case, no. That's never worked in the history of horror movies. Except for maybe Saw, and even then, it was questionable. I mean, the Princess Bride guy? Really? Have we not learned from Friday the 13th, A New Beginning? The other route they could go is to say that Michael drove Lori crazy. All the events of this movie are in her head. But wasn't that basically done, or at least attempted, in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2? I don't know, just creatively, this just seems like a bust. But granted, I haven't seen the movie, so who knows. Maybe they'll somehow uh, divert my expectation. I know I sure hope they do. But do you know what hurts the most out of all of this? This continuity means that we only got Dr. Loomis for one movie. Dr. Loomis, who was a mainstay and just as intricate and important to the story as Michael himself, appearing in nearly every Halloween movie up until his death, is now just a footnote in this canon. And to me, that's shameful. In all seriousness, I think this Halloween movie is going to be a major disappointment. On some levels for me, it already is. I understand that John Carpenter was a producer on this, and he said that the whole Michael and Laurie being brother and sister came from a drunken night of him watching The Empire Strikes Back. But to everyone else, that's an important piece of Michael Myers' backstory. This is literally taking everything your fanbase knows and saying, eh, fuck it. I mean, honestly, to me, this isn't too far off from George Lucas going back and re-editing Star Wars. Because you're basically going back and you're retroactively changing an established continuity. What if someone had wrote that Batman didn't watch his parents die in Crime Alley? He murdered them himself. It would completely change the character and the dynamic he has with his dead parents. Vitard's listening, that's your contribution today. Rewrite and establish continuity in just two sentences. Now my thought process is that erasing the past was an attempt to sweep the less appealing Halloween movies under the rug, while also trying to take away the backstory of Michael Myers. And why? Well, because he has two or three different backstories at this point. But also, probably because the more we know about Michael, or the figure, or the boogeyman, whatever he's choosing to call himself in this new movie, Chicken fried, motherfucker. the less frightening he is. The Halloween movies stop being scary horror movies at some point in time, and eventually they transitioned into the adventures of Michael Myers. People became so interested and so fascinated with the character that jump scares and swinging a knife around were enough for an audience to go, oh yeah, this was, this was good, this was a good scary movie. They didn't care about being scared, they just wanted to see Michael. He stopped invoking fear and instead began to invoke curiosity. I think a lot of people stopped watching the movies to be frightened and instead began to watch them to find out what Michael would do next or what we'll learn about him now. Michael Myers became a man shrouded in mystery that movie by movie slowly unraveled. But along the way, it kind of seems like he lost his edge. You don't get it? You don't get it? Your shit ain't working up there or something? People stopped being scared. And none of its sequels ever gave Michael the uniquely scary and ominous feel that the first two Halloween movies did. Maybe it's being rewritten so we know much less about Michael. That's my thought, at least. But the problem is, you can rewrite a movie. But you can't rewrite history. It's too late, the damage is done. The audience already knows Michael. We've had years and years of movies, films, and even a second interpretation of the character to get to know and dissect him. Even if you say this isn't that Michael, the public perception is still going to have the last 37 years of sequels in the back of their mind, especially because you're tying this to the first movie. Why couldn't you just reboot the franchise altogether? We were more than willing to forget the Rob Zombie movies and just move on with something fresh and new that didn't suck. Start fresh, new Michael, new Lori, or, or fuck it. Don't even include Lori. Maybe just showcase the figure, or the shadow, or the mechanic with the Captain Kirk mask, whatever the hell he's going by, as a Haddonfield killer. Hey, maybe don't even set it there. Different town, different continuity, you're free to do so much more. Plus, this gimmick has been done. You already brought Michael and Lori back together. In H2O, Halloween 20 years later. Why are we being told, nah, that didn't really happen, but here's Halloween 40 years later. I, I don't know. You know, it just, it, 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 it seems like a weird choice. 
But who knows, maybe they'll come up with something that really wows the audience. Maybe the Halloween fans will accept and welcome these new changes. Or maybe we're all in for another Halloween disappointment. I'll tell you what though, it does sound a hell of a whole lot better than Halloween 3D. So with that being said, I'm the Social Injustice Warrior V Infuso, and if you like the words that came out of my mouth hole and you too want to become a VTARD, don't forget to like and subscribe. There's plenty more where this video came from. Follow me on Twitter because, hell, why not? It's not considered stalking if it's on the internet, am I right? And don't forget to join the Discord. I don't have anything catchy to add to that, but just, just join it. Just go, go do it. And if you have a free moment of time and a free dollar to spare, then head over to my Patreon, where for just one buck, you too could help keep this boat afloat. And if you don't have that dollar, but you do have a free moment of time, then hit the share button. It will help me out tremendously. Vitart, oh.